Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Power BI Monthly Digest. My name is Devin Knight. And I'm Matt Peterson. And uh, we're here for the month of September to show you some of the great new features that have come out this month. And there's a, a fair amount of interesting things that have come out. Not like huge, massive stuff, but some really cool little new things, right? Yeah, and actually a brand new visual as yeah. well, which I think is a, is a game changer uh, in terms of they added Azure Maps uh, two months ago. Mm -hmm. And now we've added another pre-baked visual into the Power BI desktop. I think it's going to give uh, a different kind of view for what you're used to seeing. So we'll Very check that out. Yeah. So let's actually, let's jump right into it. So tell us about the new visual here. So it's called the smart narrative visual. Uh, and this is a preview feature. So you have to turn that on in the preview features. But it is basically like this large kind of text box, like okay. a memo pad. And what it does is it's going to analyze all of the visuals on one report page. Kind of like, you know, how we would get those quick insights when publishing out to the service. Yeah. Uh, but instead of giving us extra visuals for the insights, it's going to put it in text format. Okay. So think about coming into a report brand new, and maybe you don't want to look at the visuals right away, but you're more someone who likes to digest your data textually. Uh -huh. You can kind of come over here, look at this, and go, okay, I see what's going on with all these visuals. Now let me go a little bit further and look at it. Very interesting. All right, well, let's take a peek and see how that one works. Sure. So again, you're going to have to go in and turn this on. This is a preview feature. So just in case we're not familiar with that, if you go into your file, options and settings, and then click on options, that's going to load and it's going to allow us to click on our preview features. And for today, I'm just going to talk about it now since we're here. There are two preview features we're going to be using uh, at this point in the, the little video we're doing here. So we're going to go with the smart narrative visual, which we see right here at the bottom as well as the data point rectangle select. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit later as well. So if you're following along, turn those two visuals on uh, and so you can see what we're going with here. All right, so we're gonna click on cancel here because I do have them turned on. And now that visual is over here in our visualizations pane. It looks kind of like a little sticky note. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's right next to your Q&A, uh, which you're gonna see it kind of piggybacks off the Q&A a little bit actually. So let me click on the smart narrative visual to, to turn in here. And it says it's going to create our narrative. And as we see this, it has looked at all the visuals on our page, and it's got basically some quick insights. Now, some of these are super obvious, like sales amount and total profit margin are positively correlated with each other. And we could see that in our visuals. And from here, you can go, you know what? That isn't going to be that useful to my end user. So I can just highlight the part that I don't want, and I can delete that off of the smart visual. Uh, you can do different things in terms of formatting your text as well, making things bold, changing the font color. So you got a lot of different formatting options. In addition to that, you can actually add in your own text visuals. Uh, so if you know you just wanted to hard code some text in here saying, hey, look at how the US and Australia are relating to each other, you simply just type that right in. Okay. However, I think what's more of a, a better feature is if you have a certain value that you want your end users to actually take notice of, you can code that in as well. So with your visual selected, the smart narrative visual, you're gonna come over to the plus value. And when we click on the plus value, this is saying, look, ask a question about your data. So if you're familiar with the Q&A feature, it has the exact same uh, effect here. So what I'm going to put in is I'm just gonna type in Germany sales. Okay. So Germany sales, I'm just going to bring this over and it gives me this number here, which is the sales for Germany. And then I can name this as a value. So if I want to reference this later on, so I think a great name for this would be uh, Germany sales. Yeah, Simply so you kind put. of get like a smart label for later purposes. It, yeah. Exactly. When we call upon it, we can do the formatting of how we want this uh, currency number to show up. We're just going to leave it like that for now. I'm going to click on save. And when I come back over here, it automatically puts it into the, the smart narrative. However, this we would probably want to, let's say we didn't put that in there right away. And so this we come back to this report two months later, we want to put this in. So I could start typing in the sales for Germany. And I'm going to spell that right. Is, and then I come over to my values that I have made and I simply click on the plus icon. So the sales for Germany is, bring that in, and it did not bring it in, so let me try that one more time. It didn't pick that one up. This is in preview feature, so let's see here. Let's add that in one more time. There, there we go, had to do it twice there. <laughs> so uh, a pretty neat thing there, which I, which I like, and it's, it's dynamic as well. So for example, look at our numbers here. I'm gonna come over and just go with bachelor's education. 
watch how our visual for the smart narrative has now changed. And my Germany number has now changed to 840,000. Apart from making a visual for the whole page, you can actually make a smart narrative for just an individual visual. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I come over to an actual uh, uh, visual over here and I do a right click, I have the summarize option. And if I click on the summarize option, it's going to create a narrative cool. for where I was at. And then I could add this uh, over here as well, even though it was only concerned with this visual. So if you didn't want to overwhelm your end user, because like we had what, four uh, visuals on here before we ran the smart narrative, this might be another option out there for you. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool feature. Again, it is a preview feature though. Yeah, that's a really slick one. I like that. I like the, I, I've seen there's a custom visual like that, but I think this one actually seems to perform and, and, and respond even better than that custom visual does. So that's a really cool yeah. add in there. I like that one. So what's uh, the next, I think, is <clears throat> we're going to be looking at some Q&A additions and changes as well, right? So tell us yeah. about that. Yeah, so the new thing with the Q&A edition, which I think people have been wanting for a while, is you can actually have the Q&A perform mathematical operations on the fly for you. Okay. So you don't have to technically make a separate measure. So you can ask for a Q&A to say, hey, I want my Canada sales plus my Australia sales. Okay. okay. Maybe that's really important to the end user. Uh, they don't have to whip out their calculator and do it themselves. Right. They have Power BI do it for them. Very cool. Sounds simple enough. Let's check yeah, it out. Yeah, let's check it out. So really simply put, you're going to put in your Q&A visual. So again, the quickest way is just to do a double click on it. And then you just simply say, instead of really asking a question, which we could, but we could just tell Q&A what to do. So let's just say, for example, I want to take France's profit margin and I want to add it, so plus it to, so we can see this, prof, France profit margin plus the United Kingdom profit margin. And when we do that, we get just a basic, simple mathematical calculation. Yep. So we can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and my favorite thing, we can do the order of operations. I was a former math teacher, so I know how important order of operations are. And you can actually do that with parentheses in the actual oh, Q&A cool. visual. That's so cool. my thinking was like, if I wanted to add, if you wanted to add like France's sales plus the U.S. sales and then uh, multiply that by uh, some kind of growth, you want it to be 110% growth, you'd have to add them first, then multiply by the 1.10 yeah. to put them around parentheses. So I think that was uh, pretty slick of them to make sure to incorporate that's, order of that's operations. Like, uh... That's like heaven for you there. The math, the math, the order of you know operations, it. all that stuff you know is, it. is key for math. Yeah. Um, very cool. So the next thing I think we're looking at is related to a feature that was um, given to us last month, I think, or very recently. I can't remember mm -hmm. if it was last month or last not. month. OK. And there's been some additions or changes to it where it's now usable across multiple visuals. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's the data point rectangle. So. Last month, when you wanted to have a multi-selection maybe on a, on a line chart and see all of your filters uh, be affected by that with cross-filtering, you would have to control select the individual data points. Not that difficult, but they put a new usability feature to where you could actually do a data rectangle, kind of like the lasso preview feature. Yeah. Well, it used to be in preview. It's not in preview anymore, uh, just to make it quicker on the fly. And what they did with this month is they just updated it to that it works in more of our visuals. And basically, almost every visual um, out there in terms of bar charts, stack charts, et cetera. Yeah, let's take a peek. Let's take a look. So in here, just a real quick review of this. What you're going to do, so now this did not work in a bar chart um, last month, but now it does. So if I want Australia, United States, and Germany, and I want all these other visuals cross-filtered based on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control uh, button on your keyboard, and then I'm going to drag and drop the selections that I actually want. So Australia, United States, Germany, I click on them, and all the other visuals are there formatted the exact same way. So again, does it save you time? Yes. Is it absolutely necessary? No. But you pick what you know makes the most sense to you. Yeah, it's a pretty simple little ad, but yeah, I love it. It's a nice little uh, little thing to get added in there and make life a lot easier for you when you're interacting with the uh, tool itself here. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna look at is something that really takes more of an effect when you're in the Power BI service. I think that's where you see the the, the, the problem uh, occur. And so I, I, I know I was telling you that when you were telling me about this feature that I have had this problem happen to me where I have multiple things that are layered on top of each other where I might have like an image or a shape. Um, one technique that I use is I'll, I'll kind of hide my slicers and I'll make I'll use bookmarks to show them or hide them. I'll have a rectangle and then the slicers on top of the mm -hmm. rectangle. 
Well, what will happen sometimes is if I happen to click away from that space or that uh, shape, it will change the layering of things, and it'll look kind of odd where I'm all of a sudden I can't see my slicers anymore because they're hidden behind the rectangle, and that kind of happens. But they've they've got a fix for this, right? Yeah, they do. Um, and so for that, this is more that design factor layer there. So what you can do now is that image or those slicers or bookmarks, whatever, you can actually have them stay in place. You okay. can cement them in what we call the image layer order. And it's super simple to do. Now, the one thing I will caution you against is you, you, you make this setting, which we'll show you how to do very quickly, but then you might go, wait, this isn't working. Still, when I'm clicking away, the images are moving. Well, you only see the final results when you're in read view. So okay. once you publish this to the service, then you will see that. But still on the desktop, you're going to get that same uh, experience that you're having from earlier. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, let's take a look. Sure. So let's just say that we wanted, this is going to be one of the images that we are going to put another visual over. And we want this beautiful oval here to always be in the background. So in order for it to always be in the background and for everything else to stay on top of it, you simply click on the actual visual itself. And then you're going to go very quickly or simply in the format shape pane over here under general where it says maintain layer order you're simply going to turn it on and that's that's it that's a simple fix so now if i decide to put another uh visual on top of this which it's too big so let me make it smaller but we're not going to again be able to see the immediate results of this but it will retain that order um but now look if i click away it's like not working but remember when you publish it out to the service it's going to work Speaking of publishing, yeah, one, yeah, one of the other things that I think, uh, especially for us here at Pragmatic Works, where we do lots of different trainings uh, and we have lots of workspaces dedicated to all those places we train, when it comes time to publishing, so we're, we're doing something on the service, we want to go to publish, it could, well, I'm going to have to click on save here, what would happen is when you went to that workspace, if you were part of 20, 30, 40 workspaces, you had to go down and scroll through mm -hmm. all of these individually. Well, finally, they've had this in the service for a while now, but now we can actually search for an actual workspace. So if I just search for Matt, uh, anything that has M-A-T in it, that is going to pop up. So nice. just a really quick um, feature there. You could do it in the service when searching for workspaces, but you couldn't do it in the desktop. So we've got that now. It's the, it's the small things in life like that yeah. that are uh, pretty important that, that change change a lot of people save the seconds right absolutely now, i don't know what i'm gonna do with those extra seconds but <laughs> hopefully be more productive <laughs> all right so the next thing we're gonna look at is another small uh, little ad but also helpful but it has to do with uh, labels on uh, some of the visuals so the stack visuals were not displaying total labels uh necessarily so there's some additions and changes that have been made there right yeah and that's it that's it's simply that there there is that need for uh, some power bi users who wanted when they had a stack visual whether that was the stack uh, column chart or the stack area chart, uh, they said, hey, I want to show the totals for all of this. And previously, you weren't able to do that. Now you can. Uh, take a look. So what we have here is just a real quick uh, stacked area chart. Um, and simply put, with the visual selected, just like with all visuals, you are always inundated with the plethora of formatting options. So when we click on the format here, now we have a new one for the stacked area chart. And it is the total labels. And all we do is simply turn it from off to on. And now we actually see the totals for all of 2007, 2006. Again, that is obviously a fairly small uh, text number, not the number itself that's very large. But if we expand out total labels, you will see very familiar, if you've ever used the total labels in other visuals, change color, how far the text size is. So we'll just do a quick change here just to show that it is working. And this comes up over nice. here. So yeah, very, again, Minor change, but this might have been that one thing that you were looking for uh, because you use a lot of the stack charts. Yeah, very nice. Very simple little ad, but something yeah. that was missing before, so it's nice to have now. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look at has to do with mobile reporting, right? So um, if many of you have uh, your end users actually use the Power BI mobile application, you may have realized that whenever you're interacting with the reports that you've designed, you'll oftentimes find that they don't display quite properly unless you actually set them up specifically for mobile layouts. And so there's been some changes and a few additions to that as well, right? Yeah, it has. So now when you are actually designing the mobile view on the desktop side, you have a few more extra options that you have, you have access to. All right, take a look. So again, if you want to take a page, obviously this is what you would see out on the web, but if you want to design it of how it would look like on somebody's uh, mobile phone or, or tablet, 
what you do is you go to the view ribbon and you're going to go to the mobile layout. And now the new thing that was added with this, uh, with this update is you can now actually see the bookmarks pane and you can set up bookmarks within the actual um, mobile layout as well. The other thing that we now can do is, again, so all I've done is just added a visual over here. Uh, you have the option to get rid of your grid lines. So if you do not want to see the grid lines to see it more like what, you know, the white space that you would actually see. And then you also have the snap to grid option, which automatically aligns objects in your report as you put them in. So those are the two new things that are now part of the mobile view with while looking at it in the desktop. Very cool. So I think that's the key visualization changes that have been made. Uh, there was also the big thing is the enhanced data model, uh, data set metadata changes that have been uh, in process over the last several months is now generally available. So the big thing that that got you, we, we demoed to you a couple months ago, the ability to tap into external, um, uh, external tools like tabular uh, editor or DAP studio. That capability was not really available unless you had turned on this enabled data, uh, enhanced data set metadata. And that's in uh, out of preview now. Mm -hmm. It's in generally available. So uh, that is something you can kind of, of course, trust. It's production ready. Uh, it actually worked beautifully during while well, it was still in, in uh, preview. But now it's officially generally available. So you have that available to you. Um, the other thing as well that we can just kind of talk about at least is there's been uh, performance improvements on aggregations as well. Can you tell us about, a little, little briefly about that? Yeah, so they've um, anytime that you had a currency column for your data type uh, and you were doing some kind of calculation, you made a measure on your visuals, they have found a way to make that actually perform at a faster rate. So a minor tweak, but for those people who are doing everything Power BI in the financial world, uh, they're going to see a definite improvement for any of their measures that actually use currency data type. Very cool. And then finally, just a couple mentions of some new data connectors that were released this month. There's the uh, Azure Databricks data connector was released. Uh, there's a Mariah DB database connector, and then there's a few others as well that's worth taking a look at if you're using any of those uh, that will likely now make it a lot easier to integrate in with your Power BI uh, solutions that you've been developing. So I think that's it for this week, right? That's pretty much it for September. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for joining us, of course, as always. If you have any questions or what was your most interesting thing from to this month, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below. Let us know the things that you thought were most interesting. And outside of that, we look forward to chatting with you soon. If you're looking for more in-depth training than what we can provide in a short video like this, of course, reach out to us as well at training at pragmaticworks.com, where we uh, can help you and guide you through a more in-depth training program. Uh, we'd love to chat with you about that. So again, my name is Devin Knight. And I'm Matt Peterson. We'll see you next time. Thanks.